We've all been on holiday and dreamed of never coming back. Well, that's exactly what IT managers Simon and Carol Morley are doing. They've left well-paid careers and the Cambridgeshire town where they both grew up and brought their three kids to the South Cornish coast to renovate an old boat and start a new business from scratch. But the price they have to pay couldn't be higher. This is one big adventure from start to finish for everyone concerned. But there will not be an inch of original plumbing in this boat by the time we're done. You're looking at a man at his work. That's great. I have to be strong. The bottom line is there is only me to make it happen now. And so I'm going to. Upping sticks and going for that dream life in a dream location is always a bold and risky thing to do. But Simon and Carol are going further than most people would dream of. Their move has taken them 400 miles to the Cornish coast. They're starting a new business from scratch, and if that wasn't enough, they're leaving their comfortable family house and making their new home in this rusty 80-foot barge. Five lanes of Cornwall. Simon and Carol both took redundancy from their jobs in IT, and two months ago used part of this cash to buy the barge for £90,000. It's moored in the sleepy Cornish village of Gweek. Simon and Carol's plan is to transform it into a dream home and use the rest of the redundancy cash to launch a dive charter business. But that's a big change, isn't it, from where you were before? Mm, Massive. Yeah, huge. <laughs> if you're going to make a change, why not make a big one? <laughs> You've certainly done that. Mm. <laughs> so tell me what your lives were like back in Cambridge. Well, we both worked in IT. We were both in quite pressurised, high-tech jobs, you know, the, the usual air-conditioned office, fluorescent lights, daily grind, half an hour into work, half an hour out, not seeing much of the children. It was a very stressful environment. You know, the day I um, opted for redundancy was the first time I turned my mobile phone off in eight and a half years. So you've left these high-powered IT jobs. What's your business going to be down here? The intention is to set up a dive charter. The whole coastline is scattered with wrecks and reefs and will basically be the taxi service to get divers to and from the wrecks. But first there's a small matter of a hulking rusty barge to transform into a family home. Ooh, buddy's in the room. Mind your step. God, this is a bit of a mess in here, isn't it? Well, wait till you see mm. downstairs. It's cluttered. So this is it, home sweet home. Mm, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a bit of work, doesn't it? Well, it's not our taste, it has to be said. I've never seen so much timber effect in my life. It's very sort of country pub done bad, isn't it, really? So you've been in here a few weeks now. I mean, how are you finding it? We haven't got a bed. Yeah, um, we sleep on an airbed on, air on the floor. We're eating off plastic plates and plastic cups and... The, so no bathroom, bed, no bath. I mean, all, all, the, all the comforts that you would want in life, <laughs> you guys haven't got. Well, well, we always thought it was going to be a bit of an adventure. <laughs> the barge was converted into a rudimentary flat by the previous owner. But to transform it into a family home, it needs a complete overhaul. The two bedrooms are being used by the kids and are barely habitable. But it's in the front of the barge where the real challenge begins. Simon and Carol hope to transform this dark, derelict former workshop into a luxurious open plan kitchen living room. Can you really get a feel for being in the underside of a barge, don't you? I mean, you see all the structure and the portholes and everything. So give me a feel of what the space is going to feel like. What's it going to be? I just want it to feel light and bright and open, a comfortable living space for us with the children. To achieve their dream of space and light, Carol and Simon plan to rip out everything in this floating rust bucket and start again. The wheelhouse will become an office with 360 degree views of the deck. Down below, in the rear of the barge, there'll be a utility room, a family bathroom and the master bedroom. The kids' bedrooms will be totally transformed. 
but it's in the open plan kitchen living room where they'll blow most of their budget. Its centrepiece will be a hand-built, curved old kitchen. Fantastic. It's an ambitious plan. After buying the barge, Simon and Carol were left with £70,000. They've earmarked 40 grand to set up the business, leaving just £30,000 to convert the barge and live on until the money from the business starts rolling in. As far as budget for the project and living costs and that kind of stuff, it's pretty much split down the middle, so we're looking to invest 15 in doing this up. It should be more than double, but it should be to a really nice standard. And uh, the other 15 we're using as a buffer just to live on whilst we get all the work done. We've given ourselves basically four months to get the barge um, up and sorted, totally restored. Um, that's the ideal, and that's going to give us enough time to concentrate on setting the business up. And if the barge takes too long to renovate, then you're not focusing your attention on exactly. the new business Absolutely. venture, are you? Yeah. Therefore, no income. no Absolutely. income. I'm still trying to work out whether you're either mad or incredibly brave. Being a little bit mad probably helps. Um, it helps you take a risk, um, but it's always going to be a calculated risk. So this barge has got to be finished with £15,000 by the end of August, and you've got to start earning some income from that new business. Absolutely. So with just £15,000, they're hoping to finish the barge in just four months. It's a fantastic dream, but setting up a new business is tough enough. Combined with a massive DIY project, it's a truly tall order. I just hope Simon and Carol haven't bitten off more than they can chew. It's been four weeks since former IT managers Simon and Carol Morley arrived to start a new life in Cornwall. Their ambitious plan is to renovate this massive 80-foot barge in just four months and then start up a new dive charter business to give them an income to live off. With just £15,000, they've got to install a new bathroom, a utility room, create a kitchen living room in the prow of the boat and make two bedrooms habitable. All the time living on board and with Simon doing the work himself. With a dog, two cats and three kids, it's absolute chaos. It's basically a building site. We've got timber everywhere, there's pipework everywhere, there's wiring everywhere. We don't have one room which is clean that you can retire to of an evening or anything else. Not good. My mother would not be proud. Since they moved on board a month ago, Simon and Carol have put all their energy into installing a family bathroom. It's not been ideal, not having a proper bathroom, you know, cleaning your teeth over the sink and actually having to go up, up the yard to actually have a wash in the showers and the toilet block that are here with the boatyard. The bathroom's almost complete, but just as Carol's putting the finishing touches to the tiling, down in the engine room, Simon's alarmed to find that the board's plumbing has sprung a leak. The water peeing in through foam, which shouldn't be down there anyway, what we're thinking is that it's probably connected to the central heating. There's a series of pipes that goes underneath this decking, and I think one of them sprung a leak. We haven't got a clue which one. Simon's called in the boatyard plumber to see if he can fix the leak. It quickly becomes clear that the entire plumbing system is a mess. It's dangerous and the whole lot's got to go. What we've got is loads of plumbing that we can't get to, we can't see, we don't know what it does and it just seems to be cobbled together in some sort of weird and wonderful way. Which is doing nothing for my confidence. <laughs> it's a setback for Simon and Carol. Not only will it cost £1,500 to get it fixed, it'll delay the build by two weeks. But Simon and Carol's schedule for this build is so tight, they can't afford any delays. 
If the barge takes too long to finish, it will leave them no time to launch the dive charter business, which they hope will secure their financial future in Cornwall. Today, Simon's made a small step towards setting up that business. He's invested £4,000 in a spanking new speedboat. So on your very tight budget, Simon, you've yeah. been going out spending money on toys like this, haven't you? <laughs> well, it is a bit of a toy, but this is how I get to my work in the morning. This is going to be your new transportation at your job every day? Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. Yeah. So tell us what the new business venture is going to be like. The business we intend to set up is going to be a dive charter. We'll be able to take 12 divers out at a time. Uh, we'll take them out and drop them on a, a wreck or a reef or something like that. Um, let them have a swim around and then pick them up and bring them back again. How but, much is that going to set you back? Um, the boat that we're looking at is basically uh, 60,000. 60,000 pounds? 60,000 pounds. So there was our worry that you were spending your precious budget on a little boat like this, but you're going to buy another one, a bigger one. We could be overdosing, yeah, but <laughs> they all have their purpose, it has to be said. And when does this business have to be set up by? We need to get the dive boat on the water and making money as soon as possible. Uh, we need to crack on getting that done by the end of August. Simon's new life of cruising to work in these beautiful surroundings should be starting in just three months' time. But his family's new life on the barge has already begun, and it's far from beautiful. All the plumbing's been ripped out, and it means their basic kitchen facilities have also got to go. They're now literally camping on the boat. I have no washing machine, I have no running water, I have to wash up in a bowl in the bath with hot water that I've boiled on a little gas stove. I don't have an oven. So this is probably about as bad as it's going to get for us, really. This has to happen. We have to rip out the grot before we can put the good in. Simon was hoping to get stuck into the front of the barge next. Instead, he's decided to finish the utility room so Carol can use it as a temporary kitchen. He's keen to crack on, but he's finding that DIY on a boat takes much longer than DIY on dry land. This is a real old boat, and the whole thing's slightly bent anyway, because that's the design of them. Um, you don't get any straight edges, you certainly don't get any right angles. What it means is you can measure one side and basically cut it to length, and it's never straight. It's a real pain. Despite the hardships of life on board the barge, the kids love Cornwall. Carol's enrolled 10-year-old Josh and 6-year-old Georgia at the local village school. With just 50 pupils and after-school sailing classes, it's a world away from the life they've left behind. If we'd have been back in Cambridge now, Josh would probably be playing on the games console or watching the TV, possibly playing at a friend's house, but nothing like this. Yeah, we're, we're so pleased that this is part of his life now, and he looks forward to this every week, you know. So how often do you see a head teacher up to his knees in water? Got fantastic views, just the, the smell of the seaside, and the water's so clean and so clear, and the beaches are clean, and like, it, just, it just does not get better than this. Worries what worries, it's just all worth it. After two weeks without running water, life on board the barge is also looking up. Simon? Can you just check the uh, cold water pressure in the bathtub, please? <laughs> We've got... Carol! Yep. Thank you. Who's yelling at me and why? Oh. Oh, look at that! That's oh, serious oh, water. There's also progress in the utility room, where Simon's fitted a kitchen. It's only temporary, but after weeks of washing up in the bath and microwave meals, it's luxury for Carol. Hello there. Hi, uh, Carol, there you are. 
Hi, George. This must be How your you? utility room, is it? Hiding it is. down here? Yeah. This is a bit different from the last time I saw it. Ever so slightly, isn't it? It's, uh, it's got walls now and lights and a sink and everything. And then you got hot water? I have got running hot water. But there's still quite a few things to do, isn't there? I mean, the floor's not finished. Yeah, there's still stuff to do. As you say, the floor isn't done in here. We also haven't got portholes at the moment. We don't have any windows. And, of course, the ceiling is still very orange and it yeah, will be painted white. You've still got your highly varnished, yes. yellowy, orangey orange timber. Orange pine special. And what else has been happening? The bathroom. You've got a way. bathroom. We have a bathroom. God, this is luxurious, isn't it? I know. This is very cool. Look at that. Bath, have sink, bath have toilet. Sink. But again, there's quite a few things to do, isn't there? Just there's a lot still of a touches few bits like, to finish. This yeah. is your door at the moment. It is, isn't it? Very great? functional. It works. It's flexible. It's waterproof. <laughs> waterproof. Let's go to this space, see what's happening through here. Not very much. Not a lot. No, not so far. Um, we've had a few setbacks in terms of the plumbing and the wiring taking a bit longer yeah. than we thought in other spaces. And the kickback on that has been that we haven't started in here yet. Back that must on. be getting to you now, though, surely. So it gets you down sometimes, you know, um, waking up in the morning faced with the work still to be done is, is not an ideal situation for anybody. Yeah. And even though things are moving so slowly, can you imagine the finished product? If I couldn't, we wouldn't be able to keep going. And both of us, we've got a vision in our heads of what we want this to look like. And if we couldn't see that, we honestly wouldn't be able to keep going. Living in these conditions and not being able to see light at the end of the tunnel would not be any fun for anybody. But the unforeseen problems with the plumbing have set that vision back by a month. They now desperately need to get back on track and start work on the vast room at the front of the barge. They plan to turn it into a luxurious kitchen living room. But first, they've got to remove the rust and peeling paint from the metal hull. To make up for lost time, they're splashing 600 pounds of their budget on a sandblaster. After weeks of delays, it's great to get going. have been grubbing about with engine rooms and plumbing and all sorts of other stuff for too long, so I can do one of the fun rooms now instead of one of the needed rooms. It's going to have the kitchen in it and the living room in it. Um, that's where we're basically going to be spending most of our time. It's certainly where we're blowing most of the budget. It's actually really cool to start work on that. Comes up the tree, didn't it? Yeah. Really good. It all, all like we had a go at this beam. You know, one of those wire, wire brush things on a drill. And it took about half an hour to do that, and you still couldn't get this paint off. And you've done all this in, what, a couple of hours? Fired up by the progress, Simon's pushing on. Is this and is priming the hull beam. to keep it rust free. You get this sense that everything is starting to happen. If we can get the, the galley saloon and then the bedroom sorted, that's it. The, you know, the back of this project is broken. We can, we can live like civilised people again. Next day, and there's more progress. Their second-hand cooker has arrived quayside. Simon needs to manoeuvre this half ton of rusty Rayburn into the barge. You've done this before, haven't you, mate? The Rayburn is going to go through that hole in the deck and it's not going to make its own hole to get down below. But yeah, got a proper cooker. <laughs> it's a tight fit, but it's berthed safely. But just when things seem to be going well on the build, there's bad news. The Rayburn's supposed to be at the centre of a fantastic hand-built kitchen. But they've just learned work hasn't even started on the kitchen, and they'll have to wait eight more weeks to get it. With the build behind schedule, Simon and Carol can't afford to wait, and they've cancelled the order. They now need to completely rethink the design of the kitchen living room. We got let down by the chap who was going to um, hand build the kitchen for us, right. which was uh, a bit of a nightmare. Um, so we've had to have a rethink. So we've turned the whole room around again now. Now the galley's going over here, and that's going to be the saloon. So instead of having fitted kitchen units, it's going to be a big curly sofa in the bows. It's a real shame. I thought that was going to be the real focus of the room when you walked in, that you would well, see this beautiful handmade kitchen. Well, I was looking is, forward to it. Well, yeah, but we're going to replace it with something even better. So, Simon, what's the new kitchen going to be like? 
Um, the Rayburn is going to be going on the back wall. There will be high level units across the back. The sink will be over there by the porthole. And then low level units here with the breakfast bar on this side. Okay. We're just concentrating on this room now. Um, so we should get this done easily within two, sort of two weeks, three weeks. Um, so two weeks from now? Two this weeks from now this will be finished. finished yeah. Yeah, well, the plans that we've got... Simon's got a mountain to climb to get this wreck of a room finished in two weeks. He's got floorboards to lay, the electrics to install, and walls to clad in wood panelling, not to mention a kitchen to buy and fit. To try and get through it all, Simon's working every waking hour. But two weeks come and go, and the kitchen living room's nowhere near complete. Simon and Carol were hoping to have finished most of the barge by now. Soon they'll have to start setting up the dive charter business that will give them the income they need to stay in Cornwall. In a final bid to push this build on, Simon's dad comes down from Cambridge to help out. When I first saw it, it was a rust bucket, it was a hellhole. I thought, well, no way, no way. Simon has got to be mad, absolutely stark, raving mad to take on something like this. You can't do anything with this except walk away. And he bought it. Simon's hoping that with his dad's help, he can get the kitchen living room finished in four days. But dad's an experienced DIYer, and he's about to give his son a reality check. There's two weeks, at least, graft-wise, yeah. I reckon, minimum. Mm. You know, in probably a little bit long with all the other things you've got doing as well. Yeah, been easier if we didn't have to... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Got to prioritise now. I mean, there's only... Even for you, there's only 24 hours in a day. So, uh, no, keep plodding, mate. You'll be there. It's the news Simon's been dreading. With the end date for this build slipping further away, and the start date for the business looming ever closer, he's facing the situation he wanted to avoid, starting the business while still in the middle of renovating the barge. But they need the income from that business, so it's a deadline Simon can't afford to miss. the middle of August in Cornwall. Simon and Carol have been converting this huge barge into their dream home for four months now. So far they've installed a utility room and a bathroom. But the kids rooms are untouched and they're still struggling to finish the kitchen living room at the front of the barge. The family's new life here in this beautiful setting depends on a new dive charter business as much as a new home. With just £5,000 to spend on the barge and live on, they need to start earning an income. And what I'm slightly worried about is because of the delays that you've had, it must be costing you more money. Yeah. Yes, it is. Without question, it's costing us more money. Yeah. Um, that's why we've now got to probably step back a little bit from this build and concentrate on the business. Yeah. And it, it yeah. really is. And you're you're going to stop in. spending money and Absolutely. just try and make some money for a change. That's it, totally, yeah. that's it. But when do you think you're going to get this place sorted out, honestly? And we don't really want to do anything that's going to compromise setting the business up. So very much, you know, the bars take second place now uh, around the business. We'll fit doing this up around working the business and getting that off the ground. Simon's now stopping work on the barge and switching his attention to the business. But the dive season finishes at the end of October just 10 weeks away. To get the business started, he needs to buy a dive board. Simon's got a partner in the new business, best friend Spike Abrahams, and Spike's found a boat in Sussex. He's agreed a price of £60,000 with the current owner. But first, he needs to get the boat checked by the Marine and Coast Guard Agency to make sure she's seaworthy. So yeah, they'll both need replacing. Okay, I think it's redundant. 
Yeah. Throwing line on it, for instance, that's two of the items you require. Um, a After a thorough product. inspection, the board gets a clean bill of health. Right, thank you very much, much for your help. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. And Spike can finally head off down the course to Cornwall. Simon and Carol set aside £40,000 of their redundancy money for the new business. Their half of the dive board cost a whopping 30 grand of that. It's coming through the channel at the moment, so it should magically appear at the end of this wall, hopefully. Oh dear, there's somebody already there. Every time you get a significant moment like this, you can't help but grin. It's great. See you we got new toys. Ah, oh, it's a cracker, isn't it? He hasn't washed it yet, though. You all right there? <laughs> Good trip. There's no holes in it, right? It's the moment they've been waiting for. But there's only seven weeks of the dive season left, so they need to move fast if they're going to earn any money. Their dive boat will act as a taxi service, ferrying divers to local wrecks but first they need to find and plot those wrecks. With no time to waste, Simon and Spike are heading straight out to sea. While Simon's setting up the business, Carol's treating the kids to a day out. It's her first trip to the beach since they moved to Cornwall four months ago. <laughs> you regret not seeing much of Cornwall. I mean, that's the reason for you being here, isn't it? In a way, it would have been lovely to spend our first summer outside on the beach in the sunshine with an ice cream and a bucket and spade, wouldn't it? It would have been fantastic, but, you know, we, we knew when we took this on that we were coming down here to have to do some serious work. And have you seen much of Simon as well while he's been doing all this work? We've kind of been together, but not spending much time together, if you see what I mean. We've both been on the barge, but we've both been working. So, although we've been in the same space, we've not actually spent that much time together as a couple. So, again, that's something we're looking forward to when things calm down a bit, it's spending a bit more time together. Yeah. And how different do you really see your life when all this is done? It's totally different now. It's already different. Um, you know, what we're doing now is not nine to five. It's not in an office. But do you not feel unsettled in any way? Because you've gone through such a life change already. To not have your home finished must be a lot of pressure for you. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have the house done. It would be nice to have a bedroom and not have to pick the mattress up off the floor every morning and I don't feel unsettled funnily enough I felt at home here very very quickly. It's a massive change in life for you isn't it and I was really worried to be honest that you were all taking too much on. Yeah I, I can see your point but would it really be a change of life if it was any less? Simon and Spike are still busy wrecking diving spots for the business. It's going well, and after 10 desk-bound years in a job he hated, Simon's loving his new life on the ocean waves. This is about as far removed as you can get from running a support operation in Cambridge. Okay. This is the office. There's no flood lighting to give you headaches. There's no air conditioning to give you germs from the people with cold and sat up on sails. It's, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah. You're looking at a man at his work. It's great. <laughs> Life may be great for Simon, but they still have no paying customers. He and Carol are now down to the last £3,000 of their savings. To save money, work on the barge has slowed to a crawl and Carol's resigned to living in a building site for the foreseeable future. To make the barge more comfortable for the kids, she's bringing their toys out of storage. But we are disappointed that we haven't got further. We really wanted to, to go kind of ta-da and show the children a finished room with everything in it. It is disappointing to have to bring them their toys on board like this and not do the final flourish that we'd hoped, but... I'm sure they'll be just as happy to see their toys.
But a week later, there's great news. Simon and Spike have their first paying customers. A party of four divers have booked the boat for the day. And at long last, the business is up and running. Yeah, crack in the roll. I should shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Isn't it? It's all coming together, isn't it? It's yeah. great. You get your boat. You get your first dance yeah. dive. Yeah. It's uh, this is what we came down to call cool today. It's uh, you know pick people up at the the harbour, bring them out to a cool dive site, drop them, look after them. It's fantastic. You must be well chuffed though. But seriously, it's been an awful lot of hard work, and we're still not there yet. But we are well on the way now. So um, it's nice to see it all basically happening because this is what we came here to do. This is the whole point of coming to Cornwall. I mean, how are you finding the pressure of time? Because, I mean, getting this business going must be taking a hell of a lot of your time. Currently, it's like a seven day working week. Um, minimum is like 14 hours a day. It's quite interesting, that, isn't it? Because you you got away from your previous life to, to have a more relaxing, calmer, mm. yeah. better quality of life, if you like. Yeah. But it's still 14 hour days, seven days a week. Well, it is, but it is a 14-hour day. But a lot of it, you're playing about, you know, you're on a boat or you're going diving. People pay money to go and do that. And because it's been so important for you to get the business up and running, has the barge been compromised in any way? Well, kind of, because work stopped on the barge now, so... Really? You yeah. stopped work completely? Yeah. What does Carol think of it? Yeah, you know, she thinks the same as I do. It's a real shame that we've not been able to do it, but we've made the right choice in stopping work on the barge to concentrate on the business, because this is what's going to fund it. They need a lot more customers to make money, but the bookings just don't come in. With their savings running out, the family desperately need another source of income. To make ends meet, Carol's been forced to take a job selling home products door to door. This was never part of the dream for Carol. Hello. Hello, Mr. Gregor. Yeah. Hiya. I've got your better wear order. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. 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 Thank you and Carol's feeling the pressure of holding this dream together. It is tough at the moment. You know, we are finding it hard as a couple to cope with everything that's being thrown at us at the moment. Um, and it's putting a, a, a strain on us, on our relationship personally, just having to cope with everything, not working out the way we'd planned it to, and, you know, having to rejig all our ideas just to keep going. We, you know, we've pretty much had to stop work on the barge at the minute through lack of funds. It's the end of October. The seven weeks are quickly up and the dive season's over. Simon and Spike have given up hope of getting any more bookings and are taking the dive board out of the water until next spring. The whole problem that we ran into is we just didn't get down here um, and get Spike down here soon enough. Um, to really have a, a fair crack at the whip for this year. We've done all the preparatory work, we've got all the sites, we've dived them all, we know the history, we've got a website, we've, you know, if somebody wanted us to take them out tomorrow, we could do. Um, but, you know, we were just too late in the year. The dive season may well be over, but a few weeks later, in the run-up to Christmas, it becomes clear it's not all that's ending. When Carol and Simon took on this project to renovate a barge and start a new dive business, I knew it was going to be tough. But what I didn't know until now is just how high a price they'd have to pay in pursuit of their dream. So tell me what the situation is between you and Simon there. Well, 
at the moment, um, we've come to the conclusion that really we're not working towards the same thing anymore. Um, you know, we, we came down here with, with really high hopes of, of everything working out for us and it hasn't panned out that way and uh, unfortunately we're going to be splitting up. When did things start to go wrong? Because it's, I mean, this is a huge shock for me, really. It's, it's hard to pinpoint, really. I think we've been so busy doing things and, and trying to make things work and make things happen. We, we probably missed some signs, to be honest. Um, but really, over the last few weeks, we've, we've kind of you know, sat down and made the time to talk it through and realised that it's just not working for us anymore. I'm amazed at how well you seem to be dealing with this. With everything that you're going through, it's, it's incredible, really. Um, I won't deny there have been some tears on both sides. You know, it's not an easy thing to deal with, but uh, I have to be strong. I have to be strong with it. I have no choice, you know. I have children to look after, I have a job to do, and I have a barge to complete. I have to be strong. The bottom line is there is only me to make it happen now, and so I'm going to, you know. That's, that's me. I'm, I am a strong person, and I do. I, ha I have been the driving force behind a lot of the things that Simon and I have achieved in our marriage and so now I'm just going to have to drive myself instead of both of us. That's the, the way it has to be. Well, with that strength and that drive, I mean, you deserve to make this work. Thank you. I mean, you really do and I hope you do it. Yeah, thanks. I really do. Simon might be gone, but Carol's determined to finish this barge, come what may. But it's still largely a building site. To push things on, she's pouring every spare penny from her job into the barge. She's hired local builders to help her finish some of the work. But money's still desperately tight, and Carol's doing everything else herself, working every hour she can to drive this build forward. Two months later, and there's still a long way to go. But Carol's pushing this build on. The kitchen's almost in, and she started work on the master bedroom. And it seems it's not just the barge that's making progress. You must be really pleased. I, I can really, really see it coming together now. It's, you know, for such a long time we weren't able to do anything to this room. And it's all of a sudden it's really moved on and really made some progress and it's just really cool to see it now. The more you see done, the more you want to do. I mean, and you're really so cool. spurred on eh? it's, it. Is, it's fantastic. It is. It's really, really it is cool. you know, good I'm, to see that look in your face. Yeah. Having had some difficult times, it's nice to be moving on again. And it feels like I'm moving on with everything. You know, I'm pushing on and making this a forward step in, in more ways than one. This, this was always my thing. Doing the boat was my part of the dream, if you like. From a, a teenager, I have wanted to do something like this. So now, you know, it really is my project. And I've taken over, and I'm not compromising anymore on design and things like that. You know, this is how I want to make it work, and I'm going to make it happen. And I've taken the decision to cut back on the frills in life and pour every penny I've got into making this work. And eventually, hopefully, this is going to be a fantastic home for me and the kids. Carol's decision to take control of this build has given her a new lease of life. She's determined to turn this building site into a family home. And I can't wait to see if she can pull it out of the bag. Last year, Simon and Carol Morley came to Cornwall to start a new business and transform this barge into their dream home. But in the run-up to Christmas, the pressure of achieving their dream proved too much, and the couple separated. Undeterred, Carol bravely decided to push on alone, with the help of some builders. It's now March, and since Simon and Carol split five months ago, she's been battling to turn this wreck into a family home. She's had very, very little money and three kids to support, but throughout, she's refused to give up. I've been amazed by her determination to keep going under such pressure, and I want to see if she's managed to create the dream home 
I think she deserves. Hi, Hi Carol, how are you? Very nice good. to see you again. Very good. It looks great out there, doesn't it? I love it. <laughs> the deck looks fantastic. It's looking very good, isn't it? Nicely All painted, painted and, and deck chairs yeah. outside. Progress definitely being made. But what does it look like downstairs? Come and have a look. Below deck. Two months ago, the whole family were living in this grotty room, but it's now a cosy bedroom for Carol. Oh. Carol, this is great, isn't it? I'm really pleased with this room. It's after so long sleeping on the floor, on a mattress, with everything else of day-to-day -day living around me. I have this. This is a huge transformation. So what does it feel like having your own bedroom now? It's fantastic. <laughs> it's so nice after all that time of no walls, no door, no privacy, not even a proper bed, to actually be able to come in here at night, shut the door <laughs> and get in a bed. <laughs> This is a lot lighter in here, isn't it? And you've got pictures hanging on the wall. I know. It's like a little gallery. It makes a difference, here. doesn't it? Oh, Carol, this looks great. What a difference. This was the hardest room to imagine because it was, the, it was completely empty mm. when we started. And look at it now. It's fantastic. I always knew Carol would finish this barge but I'm amazed at what she's achieved on a very limited budget. The kitchen living room is flooded with light and feels bright and spacious. And the curved leather bench looks great against the red painted walls. The Shaker style kitchen works well and the detailing is simple but effective. The kids rooms are unrecognizable. They're still small, but the colour scheme makes them feel fun and welcoming. Throughout, Carol's used light colours and bare wood to flood the barge with light. And the bold artwork really brings the spaces to life. So is this barge as good as you thought it would be? Yes. Yes. I'm so pleased and proud with how it's come out. This is what I had in my head. It was a bit of a leap of faith, but uh, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. And I'm so pleased that it's come out right. Did you think that you'd ever get that? I had my doubts. There were the times when things were really low on the personal front and it was really hard to carry on. And the money situation was getting worse and I wasn't sure if we were ever going to get this finished. So how much did the renovation work cost you? It's cost us around about £20,000 in the end. That was about five grand over our initial estimate. But I don't think it's an unreasonable amount to have spent to have achieved what we've achieved. Well, I think you should be proud of yourself because since Simon left, you have pushed this build forward and created your family home. It's incredible. It's meant a lot of early mornings and a lot of late nights, but boy, was it worth it. This is a beautiful home, but Carol's adventure was always about more than just the barge. She came to Cornwall to build a new life for her and her family. And I wonder, after all she's been through, if she feels she can still achieve that. And how do you feel about the future for you and for the kids? I really think this is the place for us to be. I, mean, I think we've got a great future down here, you know? Uh, the children are doing so well in school and they're so happy and so settled and they've taken on lots of new hobbies and ideas that they, they wouldn't have come across in their old life. This is the way we want to be and I think between the four of us we can really make it happen. This is where I want the children to go to school and grow up and you know, start their adult lives even. This is really, really where I want to stay. What Carol's journey has taught me is that if you have a dream, You've got to see it through to the end, no matter where it takes you. And despite everything that she's been through, Carol has created an incredibly exciting new life for her and for her children in a unique and wonderful new home. And I really admire her for that.
Next week, Jeremy escapes the city for a new house and life in Oxford. Well, I'm feeling stupid for not having looks in the first place. I don't need it. I didn't want to be the pushy girlfriend that gets her elbow in and right off we go. <laughs> but that's what you're doing, Yeah, I think this is a bit clever.